The gardens and grounds surrounding the Inverlochy Castle Hotel in the Highlands near Fort William reflect the calm, ordered way that Matt likes to work. They also have a big influence on his menus. You know, the food that we get locally um, from the grounds of Inverlochy you know, is fantastic. We get lots of vegetables and herbs in the season out of our own gardens. Occasionally in the season as well, we'll get some uh, deer off the estate. Some deer shoot them, they'll go to a local game dealer and we'll get them back and we, we use roe deer. So that's fantastic as well. Any more champagne? We've got um, on the loft this night, we've got champagne dressing. So I just need a big touch of champagne just to put through the dressing. Matt's been head chef here for eight years and won a Michelin star. He comes from a catering background. It was something that you know, as a youngster, I used to be involved in the kitchen a lot with my dad and things, and he had friends that were in the industry, and we'd go and visit them and the like. And my mother was always of a great thought that um, I shouldn't get into the industry with the long hours and the hard work. She felt that, you know, it wasn't a good idea for me to get into it. OK, go. Cool. And then, um, as I grew up, it was something that I thought, yeah, why not? The French chef Albert Roux, the older of the famous Roux brothers, visits the hotel several times a year and has adopted Matt as a protégé. Matt is a very, very talented uh, young chef. He knows the colour, he knows taste, he knows symmetry. Very, very gifted young man. Not surprisingly, Matt asked Albert's opinion of his great British menu. This is you. Thank you. It is very much you. You have your own style. There's a lot of imagination has gone to it, but there's no craziness. If you care for your life, you <laughs> well win it. <laughs> Matt's a very confident chef, and it's no accident that he's got through to this stage of the Great British Menu competition. Oh, I'd love to win. That'd be great. You know, you're in a competition against another well-renowned chef. You want to win. You want to beat him. That's human nature. You always want to be at the top. Back in the kitchen, they're both getting underway. Well, what I'm going to do with these guys, I'm just going to take the head off them, just centre the tail, the middle bit, and I'm just going to pull the, the waste pipe out gently. I'd love to chat that, but I'm going to... <laughs> <laughs> they're conforming to type here. Tom thrives under pressure, whereas Matt thinks the way to win in this highly competitive environment is to know exactly what you're doing. Obviously, yeah, with less ingredients, it is more ease, but, you know, that's not the, the reason I'm doing it. The reason I'm doing it is because I think, you know, I've got to try and let the ingredients speak for themselves, and it's very easy. You know, I, I've done it myself in the past, fall into the trap of um, trying to put too many things on the plate and then just trying to complicate what you're trying to do. Which Matt may think Tom's doing with his three kinds of beetroot, and he hasn't chosen the easiest fish to work with either. You use pipe much, Matt? Not often. So you know about the bones in the pipe? I do, and maybe that's one reason why I don't use it too often. Is he trying to undermine Tom's choice of produce here? So what gave you the idea to use your pike for a great British menu? Again, you know, doing something original. Yeah. Um, it's a fish that I enjoy eating. I think it's very underused. It's, one, it's very sustainable fish, and today everyone's talking about, you know, life expectancy of monkfish and cod, and, Certainly, you know, yeah. in the next generation there might not be enough. I sure. don't think we have that worry with pike. You know? No, I think there's plenty of them about. <laughs> Plenty of pike, but plenty of bones, which are hard to get out. Turbot or sea bream would be much easier for a banquet. But Tom had decided on a freshwater fish.